edition of this month's experiment from the Reuben H. Fleet Science Center in San Diego, California. I'm Nicole Schiffer. And I'm Brandon Elliott. So today we're going to make spectroscopes. I've got a real fancy one right here, like actual professional scientists use, but we're going to try and make one at home today. One, right? Exactly. We're going to, yeah, exactly. We're going to make one at home today. So what we're going to do, I'm going to tell you what ingredients we need for this experiment, but just remember, as always, you can find these this list of ingredients on our website, www.rhfleet.org. All right, here we, we go. We also have a new blog for people to check out. And what is that called? If you go on our exhibits uh, site as well, you can click on interpreter blog and check out what we do every day. Yeah, Nicole writes on it every single day, so make sure that you, you read that. All right, here we go. Black film canister with no lid. You do not need the lid, so it's just open like that. A CD. Um, an old CD. You need a pair of scissors. Uh, or possibly a utility knife, an exacto knife, and again, this is one of those things that you're going to want to have a parent or a responsible adult help you out with that. Um, you need some clear tape, the scotch tape, or scotch some duct tape. tape. All right, and that's pretty much it for this, okay? Nicole, you want to take us through how we make this? Sure, this is really easy. So you're going to actually cut um, a circle about this size out of your CD. You're going to take some duct tape to remove that film on it, and just pat down the duct, duct tape, take it off, and by the end, you should get something clear like this. All right, so you're going to actually make a slit in the, in the closed side of your film canister. That was easy. And you're going to take the CD that you cut out, place it over the open side, and just tape it on there. So once you're done, you're going to actually look through the CD part of your spectroscope. And, huh, that's really interesting. I'm trying to look into the light here. So what are you seeing there? Well, I'm actually seeing an order of lights, uh, starting with purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Right. I'm going to try out some different lights to maybe see where that LED light go. Right. There it is. Huh. With the LED, I'm actually only seeing one color. Mm -hmm. But then you go back to the white light and you see... I see many. Many. Okay. Good. So, so what's, that, what's going on well here, that, Brandon? Yeah, so that pattern of light that you're seeing, the red, the blue, the green, the yellow, and all of that, that's called a spectrum. And what you're, use, what you're doing right now is basically using that as a, as a prism. And what that's doing is separating all of those kinds of light, the white, the blue, the, the red, the blue, the yellow, all of that. Mm -hmm. All of those different kinds of light have different frequencies. And so what that does is it separates out those frequencies of light. So uh, purple, violet light actually has the highest frequency of okay. light, okay. And, uh, and red actually has the lowest frequency of light. So basically the way that you're doing that is, again, separating it out just like a prism, and you get to see all of the kinds of light that's inside white light, which is the same kind of light we get from the sun. This is what astronomers do to study stars and planets and the universe ah, around us. So neat. It's pretty cool. Great. What a great space uh, tool here. Yes. Very appropriate in the Challenger Center. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much for that explanation. Thank you, viewers at home, for watching. Tune in next month. And also, remember, do, do try, try this, this at home. home.